agents have become an integral part of how football operates at the highest level. Whilst the general view of agents is that they are parasites who only care about their back pockets and will happily disrupt players and mess clubs around to get the best deal possible for themselves, I think that view is rather simplistic. Whilst there are no qualifications required to become a football agent, many agents have a background in the legal profession, and I think that is a good way to view agents, a bit like legal professionals. Just as you get rogue lawyers and good lawyers, so too do you get good agents and bad agents. Who is who among the profession? Well, I'll leave that up to you, but today's video sees us take a look at two of the most high-profile, successful, and controversial agents within the modern game. George Mendes and Mino Raiola. So we're going to take a look at some of the finest players represented by both men at this moment in time in the form of two starting 11s before pondering which side would come out on top. I've done a few of these now. I made an old versus young 11, a left footed versus right footed 11 and even one where I generated a best 11 from every one of the world's major cities to see who you and I thought would come out on top. All three, as I can recall, did terribly in terms of views. But if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, to quote the Malaysian author Zen Chow. Plus, on all three of those previous videos, lots of you have asked me to make this one. So don't let me down. As usual with these videos, I won't go through player by player, but position by position. So goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders, and so on. Starting with Raiola, because, you know, youngest first, and the Italian is 53. Meanwhile, Mendes is 55. Without Freddy Adu then, because he is represented by the Wasserman Agency, here is my Mino Raiola 11. Getting us started between the sticks is Gianluigi Donnarumma, who Raiola signed up to his agency when the AC Milan goalkeeper was just 16 years old. About a week after Donnarumma became one of his clients, Raiola boldly declared that the teenager was already worth 150 million euros, a world record fee at the time. Raiola's handling of Donnarumma has been the source of much controversy over in Milan. After the Italian urged Donnarumma to quit the San Siro in 2018, and was quoted as recently as 2020, saying that his client should never have signed a contract extension with the club. Regardless, Donnarumma has developed very well with his boyhood club, and he starts in goal ahead of Alphonse Ariola and Walter Benitez. The back four, from right to left, reads Denzel Dumfries, Matthias De Litt, Stefan de Vrij, and Owen Windel. The more observant among you may have noticed that that means we have an all-Dutch back four, which isn't because I prioritise chemistry as though I were playing a game of FIFA Ultimate Team, but is just a result of who I felt was Raiola's most talented client in each position. There is stiff competition, particularly at centre-back, where Kostas Manolas and Alessandro Romagnoli are unfortunate to miss out, but De Litt and De Vrij are an incredibly strong partnership. Dumfries and Windal may be less known to viewers outside of the Netherlands, especially if you are not regular viewers of this channel, but both are real talents. Dumfries, who has been capped 16 times by the Netherlands, has been with PSV since 2018, where he has been excellent ever since his arrival from here in Maine. Windle is even more exciting, four years younger than Dumfries, age 21, but already capped seven times by the Orange. A flying fullback who is quick, creative, and brilliant on the ball, Windle featured in my What If Suriname 11 not so long ago, and he features today as well, ahead of another Dutchman in the form of Fulham's Kenny Tete. Competition was slightly stiff for a left back where I could have gone with young PSG fullback Mitchell Backer, but I think Dumfries is the right shout on the balance of things. Moving into midfield, Marco Verratti ensures that PSG don't go unrepresented in this element, at the base of our midfield diamond, with Ryan Gravenberch and of course Paul Pogba ahead of him. Verratti is just such a natural footballer who is like poetry in motion at times, and has enjoyed a wonderful career despite having about as much dedication to the sport as Nicholas Bentner and a love of partying that could rival Ronaldinho. Pogba is perhaps Raiola's most high-profile client, or at least he was prior to 2021, and he has looked a lot happier at Manchester United this season. Nonetheless, Raiola has been a constant critic of the club and certain managers. Earlier this season, Raiola told the press, quote, I can say that it's over for Paul Pogba at Manchester United, end quote, on the eve of a huge game for the club against RB Leipzig. 
He's been a bit quieter on the matter since then, though it is notable that an agent not saying anything controversial for just a few months should be noticeable to a casual bystander at all. Ryan Gravenberch completes the midfield, and I've already spoken about him at length on this channel in the past. Still aged only 18, Gravenberch plays with real class and authority in midfield, and the fact that he is already keeping the likes of Blaise Matuidi and Pablo Rosari out of this 11 speaks volumes. I should stress that Mina Raiola represents a litany of outstanding wide players, from Hervin Lozano and Marcus Toram to Calvin Stengs and Justin Kleinert. However, I felt the strongest possible 11 required going wingless and playing a midfield diamond with two centre forwards. The gemstone in that diamond, if that's a phrase, is Henrik Mikatarian, and the two centre forwards, as many of you will probably have anticipated, are Erling Haaland and Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Followers of the Premier League may feel Mikatarin's inclusion is somewhat dubious or generous, but the Armenian has been outstanding at Roma this season. Rolling back the years to his time at Dortmund, for whatever reason, it didn't really work out for the 32-year-old in England, but he has bagged 15 goals and made 9 assists in all competitions for both club and country this season, and one suspects he would be a real weapon within this 11. Ibrahimovic and Haaland, you could argue, require little introduction or explanation but I'll give a quick word to each of them nonetheless. At opposite ends of their careers right now, both players are among the most prolific goalscorers in European football's top five leagues this season. Ibrahimovic has scored 17 goals in 25 games this season, including 15 in 17 in Serie A. Meanwhile, Haaland has continued his laughable goalscoring record with 37 goals in 38 games for Borussia Dortmund, putting him second only to Rob Lewandowski in the race for this season's European Golden Boot. Raiola has been representing Ibrahimovic practically since the Dark Ages, and Raiola's love of cash is often cited as the reason Ibrahimovic has been transferred so many times throughout the course of his career. For all the legitimate criticisms of the Italian, I suspect that claim underestimates Ibrahimovic's own nomadic impulses and tendency to get bored. Haaland, meanwhile, Raiola has been whoring out across Europe to the highest bidder for the last couple of months. The Norwegian is clearly a generational talent to whom scoring goals is just second nature, and he has the potential to become the best, or at least the most effective, player on the planet. Where he will end up next appears to be anyone's guess at this point, but despite meetings with Barcelona and Real Madrid, both of whom are up to their eyeballs in debt, the two Manchester clubs remain the favourites with the bookies. Either way, he is a nailed-on starter in our Mino Raiola 11, and already, even still aged only 20, you'd have to say that he is probably the star of the show in this side. I haven't chosen to do substitutes for these 11 since I'm mentioning players who just missed out as I go along, but of those who I haven't already mentioned, as far as I can recall at least, honourable mentions go to the likes of Luca Pellegrini, Moise Ken, Daniel Marlon, Mohamed Itaren, and Myron Baudu. Now we come to George Mendes' 11. Fun fact about George Mendes, the first transfer that he ever brokered was a deal between Vittoria Guimaraes and Deportivo La Coruña for the signing of Nuno Espirito Santo. Nuno, who went on to have a fairly unremarkable career as a goalkeeper, now manages Wolves of course, where so many of Mendes' clients ply their trade. Nuno is now 47 years old, so he doesn't make this 11, but even in his pomp he would have been no match for Manchester City number 1 Edison. Who gets us started? The best elite level goalkeeper in the world with the ball at his feet, Edison has a terrific range of passing off his favoured left foot. In addition to being alright at all that other boring stuff that goalkeepers have to do. You know, like keeping the ball out of the back of their net. So he starts between the sticks with an honourable mention for Rui Patricio. The back four, again from right to left, reads Ricardo Pereira, Ruben Diaz, Pepe and João Cancelo. Portugal have a plethora of talented right-backs, which, by default, means that Mendes' Gestifute agency represents lots of talented right-backs. Nelson Semedo often gets the nod for Portugal at international level, ahead of Ricardo Pereira, though I believe Pereira is the superior fullback. Meanwhile, the man who Nelson Semedo replaced at Wolves, Matt Doherty, is also a Mendes client. At centre-back, Ruben Diaz was always a foregone conclusion, as arguably the most prized asset in Mendes' portfolio in terms of pure transfer valuation, but either Nicolas Otamendi or Ruben Vizo could have partnered him. Ultimately, even at the age of 38, 
I think that Pepe is better than both of them. And alongside Ruben Diaz, I think those two could be really formidable. Joao Cancelo starts at left back since he is excellent there and there is less competition among Mendes' clients in that position. It also means that three of our first five inclusions play for Manchester City, compared to not a single player in our Mino Rayal or 11, which is perhaps a consequence of the frosty relationship, shall we say, between Rayola and Pep. At the base of our midfield, we have Liverpool and Brazil enforcer Fabinho, with Ruben Neves and Bernardo Silva either side of him. In truth, given the way in which Neves likes to sit in deep, pick passes and dictate the tempo of a game, you might actually be better off with something like this, with Neves and Fabinho sitting, giving Bernardo Silva even more freedom to push on and pick the ball up closer to our front three. Fabinho and Bernardo were nailed on starters in my eyes, but Neves just squeaked in by a hair's breadth. I could just as easily have opted for resurgent Lille midfielder Renato Sanchez, who is currently battling for the league on title in France, or Porto star Sergio Oliveira, who has been absolutely outstanding this season, bagging 19 goals from midfield. Elsewhere, there's Jean Moutinho, Pizzi, and even Nikola Vucevic, but I am a huge fan of Neves's, so that is why I very narrowly edge towards him. Our George Mendes 11 has rather more width than Mino Raiola's side, with Cristiano Ronaldo on the left, Angel Di Maria on the right, and Andre Silva playing through the middle. It must be said that in the forward areas, some serious talent was forced to miss out, including the likes of Diogo Jota, Pedro Neto, Rafael Jao, and James Rodriguez. Despite the stiff competition, I think Ronaldo, Di Maria and Silva are basically undroppable. Cristiano Ronaldo is the man who transformed George Mendes from being a very successful Portuguese football agent into one of the wealthiest and best-known agents in the entire world, worth hundreds of millions of pounds. Said to be like a father figure to Ronaldo, Mendes brokered Ronaldo's transfer from Sporting to Manchester United when Ronaldo was just 18, and the two have been seemingly inseparable ever since. Ronaldo may no longer be Mendes' most valuable asset in terms solely of transfer value, age 36, but you could certainly make a strong case for him still being the most important player in this 11. Angel Di Maria is another man who is now in the autumn of his career, age 33, but he shows few signs of slowing down. He has 13 goal contributions from 20 starts in league on this season, so he has to start. What's more, I believe Di Maria speaks fluent Portuguese following his time at Benfica and his large number of Portuguese teammates over the years, which means that every player in this 11 is fluent in Portuguese, which should be good for team cohesion. You'd have an entire team bus full of people speaking Portuguese with a very confused Matt Doherty sitting at the front of the bus just trying to listen to a podcast. Someone is now going to tell me in the comments that he can speak Portuguese due to all of his Portuguese teammates back at Wolves now, but... That doesn't fit the vision that I have of this fictional team that I've created on their fictional team bus, so forget it. Some of you may be wondering why I didn't just put Ronaldo at centre forward and play Jota on the left flank, and that is because Andre Silva just cannot stop scoring. After he scored just two goals in 25 games for AC Milan in Serie A, the Portuguese international has transformed into Eusebio this season. He has scored 26 goals in 31 games for Eintracht Frankfurt this season, and only Robert Lewandowski and Erling Haaland have scored more in the Bundesliga. In fact, there are reports in Germany that Borussia Dortmund are weighing up a £35 million bid for Silva as a replacement for Erling Haaland, who looks certain to depart this summer, along with suggestions that they may face competition from Manchester United for his signature should the Red Devils miss out on both Haaland and Harry Kane. Honourable mentions in the Mendes camp that I haven't already mentioned include the likes of Daniel Podence, Carlos Vinicius, Gonzalo Gerdes, Diego Costa, and Russian meathead Ertem Zuba. So, who would win? Well, as ever, that is a question for all of you, but I'll give my two cents for what it is worth. I think this is probably the most evenly matched two 11s in any video of this ilk that I have made to date, and whilst I think that the Mendes 11 probably just about edges it, I think you could make a case for a draw being the most likely outcome. I say that the Mendes 11 might edge it based upon the fact that I think their back four is more solid, defensively, than the Mino Raiola 11s, particularly in the fullback positions. 
They also have excellent defensive reinforcements in the form of Fabinho. The entire midfield and defence has fantastic stamina and work rate, and obviously there is the star power of Cristiano Ronaldo and the seemingly unstoppable goal-scoring force of Andre Silva at the opposite end of the pitch as well. Mino Raiola's men pose even more of a threat at the attacking end of the pitch with Haaland and Ibrahimovic, but are perhaps slightly more temperamental. The likes of Pogba and Mkhitaryan are superb on their day, but are probably more prone to having a bad day at the office than the likes of Fabinho and Bernardo Silva. So yeah, in a one-off game, I'd say maybe 1 all or 2-1 to the Mendes 11. And across 10 games, I think you'd probably see something like 3 wins for the Mendes 11, 4 or 5 draws, and a couple of victories for Mina Raiola's men. As I say, those are just my views, and you can switch up the 11s to whichever you think is the strongest for either side, and share your thoughts as to who would come out on top below in the comments section. That is all from me, but thank you all as ever very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments as I say. Please do hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video, it makes a big difference to the algorithm. And make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting the little bell icon if you haven't already. You can also find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram via the username at HITC7s on both, should you wish to do so.